All right, everyone, happy Friday. Hope you've all had a great week so far. Um, my name is Sarah Fairclough, and I'm the business administrator for our platform solutions team here at Smart Simple. Uh, today, we're going to be learning and talking a bit more about um, automated watch list scanning. Just wanted to let you know about a couple events that we have couple, uh, coming up this year. Uh, so our EMEA Summit is going to be in Dublin on April 29th and 30th as well as Elevate, rather, is going to be in Boston this year, later on in October. So keep your eyes out. Um, we're going to be sending invitations shortly, and uh, we hope to see you there. And just before we get into it, uh, we'd love to hear your questions and hear your feedback. Um, if you can hold your questions, though, until the end of the demo, uh, and then we'll be happy to uh, do a Q&A session then. And on that note, I'm going to pass it off to my host, Dan. Morning, everybody. Um, this is Dan Erdley, uh, Senior Platform Solutions Manager at Smart Simple from the Business uh, Platform Solutions team. Um, today, we're going to be talking about uh, watch list scanning, as you know. Um, so, in this webinar, we're going to walk through how Smart Simple is integrated with certain watch list scanning vendors, um, how you can automate scanning uh, against those particular watch lists, uh, either at the grant level or at the individual payment level. So um, as you guys may know, if you're doing this uh, outside of Smart Simple today, um, doing that vetting process, uh, evaluating and vetting organizations um, can be a, a manual and tedious process, um, especially if you're use, utilizing an outside uh, watch list scanning service. Um, you may be having to manage those things either an, an ad hoc one-off basis uh, or you might be able to, in certain services, be able to upload a list and have uh, multiple records scanned. Uh, but it does take time, uh, and it falls outside of your uh, typical grants management processes within Smart Simple. Um, so what we have within the platform uh, to solve for this is the ability to automate some of those scanning processes, uh, whether it's um, OFAC checks or well beyond those things into uh, multiple different terrorist watch lists and uh, criminal uh, watch list databases. Uh, and you can automate those services so that they become just a, a natural part of your process flow of your grant evaluation and payment processes. Um, so what we can do with that is that we eliminate that no longer that you're no longer manually vetting each grantee. You can do those things automatically. Um, we can do that either through one of two integrated providers. Uh, the first is CSI Web, um, and the other is LexisNexis. Um, so you have the option to work with either provider, uh, and there are built-in integrations within the platform to be able to facilitate that. Uh, I will call it out um, that, of course, that does require uh, for you to have an agreement with one of those two providers, and there would be an additional cost uh, for being able to utilize their services. Um, but there's certainly no additional ongoing cost you're paying to Smart Simple directly uh, for utilizing that integration. Um, so as I mentioned, these uh, watch list scans go well beyond your typical OFAC checks, which may be a baseline for many of your organizations. Uh, these uh, providers have many different uh, watch lists that are built into their service, and you can drill down and define uh, which watch lists you want to include as a part of your processes, uh, which ones are important to you. Um, and then we can uh, set up that scanning operation at multiple levels throughout the system. So we can do it at the organizational level, so on your org records. Uh, you can have those scans executed. Um, you could store copies, uh, PDF versions, down to an upload field on that org record, so you'd have that history over time. Uh, you can also do it at the grant level. Um, so at the grant level, uh, you could have a watch list activity that gets created at some point during your grant review process before the grant has been approved, uh, and that could scan uh, whatever details you've uh, defined to be included and then based on whether there's a hit or not, that could then define whether uh, that grant application review takes a, a certain conditional uh, second review that needs to be evaluated based on a potential hit. And then the third level, uh, which we've seen especially uh, from a number of our corporate clients, uh, is executing watch list scans uh, as each individual payment uh, for a grant is uh, processed through. Um, so in that scenario, it may be uh, that, that payment has been scheduled. It's now come up to that scheduled payment date, so we're ready to, to move that forward, and it's going to be delivered to accounts payable to pay out those funds. Uh, prior to that executing, we can include automated steps to run that watch list scan uh, on the organization, on the contacts associated with the organization, on the board members if you wanted to include those types of details. And then we could hold that payment from being processed any further if there's a potential hit. 
Um, so any of those are possible, all utilizing the same integrated service. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, there would be the additional cost of utilizing the services of one of those two third-party providers. Uh, in addition to that, there would be an upfront setup cost um, with Smart Simple to be able to configure uh, the processes and the proper syntax to pass um, the data and the right information to that provider. Um, it's a little more involved um, than what most clients may uh, have the appetite to do um, themselves within the system in terms of configuration. Um, so typically that would be a small project that you would want to engage our team and to talk about your requirements so that we could uh, evaluate that and then provide a quote for getting that set up. So like I mentioned, the benefits of this is that you're no longer committing that admin time. Uh, you can focus your reviewing only on the scenarios where there may be an issue rather than having to do this for each and every single uh, scenario. Uh, and then we can automatically hold those applications or hold those payments if there's that potential uh, for an issue. Uh, and then as that's built into the system, um, you can flag those grants and payments for hits so that you can uh, easily hold them, built-in validations, uh, include visual cues, uh, that there's a potential issue, um, as well as if there's a, uh, an actual hit, um, then if that hit is going to be cleared, uh, only the appropriate roles of users are going to have access and ability to do that. And then there can be built-in audit trails to ensure uh, that they are providing uh, the right documentation for why they are uh, treating that hit as a false positive. And throughout that, you'll have the entire detailed scan results um, so that you have all the information that you need to assess that hit determine if it's valid, or determine if it's something you need to look into a little further and potentially uh, treat as a false positive hit. So with that, we'll go through into a short little demonstration. Uh, today's not gonna be a very long demo, just because um, although uh, there's a little bit involved in getting this set up, um, the actual presentation of this content is a little different. So um, within your request manager um, or your submission manager, whatever module um, you're utilizing for managing your grants processes, um, you will have uh, your grants. Uh, and then underneath that, you could have a watch list scan activity at what we would call level two, um, or you can have a watch list scan activity um, as a child record, a level three under your payments. Um, so in the examples that we've set up for today, we've done that at the payment level. So underneath each payment. Um, so within that, um, just taking one grant as an example, um, we have a grant here for uh, $300,000. We have our payment set up for each of these three payments. Um, and then within that first payment record, um, you'll see that we have an activity list under that payment record. Um, so under that activity list, if you're using what we use as our fund manager or budget manager, you might be utilizing disbursement records. So that might be something you're usually um, familiar with. Um, but what we can do in addition to that is create that watch list scan activity automatically. Um, so this is never something that we would expect you to have to do manually where you have to trigger that each and every time. Um, the system through its workflow is going to go ahead and create that watch list scan activity at the appropriate point in time for that payment um, so that we're gathering those details um, in real time. So as you'll see in this example, um, we have the payment for our particular application. Um, in this case, the system did not come back with a particular hit, and you'll see the watch list results at the bottom. Um, and in our case, we're essentially just providing to that scanning provider um, the applicant's name and the organization's name um, associated with this grants application. Um, just to speak to that for a minute, you can pass as many different contacts um, or organization level details as a part of that scanning service as you'd like. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, uh, we've worked with some clients where they track the board members of the organization on the organization record in their system. Um, the watch list scan uh, execution could also include that table of board members and pass those details uh, to that scanning provider uh, to provide any details and hits back for each of those individual board members. So as long as it's a field uh, within the system, we can provide that as a part of that scanning service. Uh, and you can also make it more detailed beyond just the organization name or the contact name. Um, you can string together multiple parameters or attributes um, so that taking the applicant as our example. We could include the applicant's name, their year of date of birth, um, their country uh, of origin. Um, there's multiple uh, attributes and fields that can be passed all in conjunction with a single scan um, with the goal being that you can potentially reduce the number of hits uh, that are false positives if there's additional data that you have on hand 
uh, that's applicable to either uh, that contact or that organization. So we have another uh, example um, within the request manager where we do have some hits, so you guys can see what that would look like. Um, so within our grant here, again, we have uh, multiple payment records. Um, so those payments have been scheduled, um, they've been set up. Uh, and then within a, an individual payment, um, this one's been flagged as a hit. So as you can see, we can include a display uh, within that payment record itself. So if there's some type of uh, manual release of those payments, um, somebody would be immediately queued to that. Um, they would not be able to move that payment forward into the next status step because we would include validations to prevent that when there is a, a present hit on the watch list scan that's associated with this payment. Um, so just like on the other example, we'll go down into our activity list. Um, and you'll see that, like we mentioned earlier, you might have disbursements linked to your fund manager, um, but we'll also have a single watch list scan activity created for that payment. So in this case, um, we used some data uh, that would trigger a, an obvious hit. Um, we included uh, one of the FBI's most wanted, um, the top, top 10 most wanted individuals, uh, Alexis Flores. Um, so he's our grant applicant in this case. Um, so obviously this is going to be flagged as a hit because as you'll see, this had 15 matches found against multiple different databases um, from the scanning provider. Um, but as you'll see from each of those uh, levels of detail um, that are provided back uh, from the provider, um, we can categorize those so that we have a listing of those results, uh, the name that came back as a part of that hit, what type of uh, contact or organization that is, um, the details that they found as a part of that listing, and then you'll also see a score that's associated with that. Um, so that score is on a scale of zero to one, uh, one being a 100% hit uh, of confidence. Um, and then as you drop down, there's less confidence that that's a, a valid hit for the details that were provided to uh, the watch list scanning service. Um, so you'll see as we go through that some of these, like this one, Alexis Flores, is called out from the top 10 most wanted list um, as a 1.0, meaning that that's an exact hit. Um, so that's something you can adjust as a part of your settings within the system so that you can uh, gauge that threshold so you'll only receive results back uh, that are uh, exceed that threshold um, that you've set within the system. So in this case, with having a, a scan activity that's uh, received a hit, um, we can trigger an email if, if needed to a, a party internally um, that there has been a hit, that it needs to be reviewed. Um, you would then have a responsible party internally that would need to go in, review the details, and then if, there's, uh, if it is truly a false positive, they would have to clear that hit, provide clearance comments of why they uh, made that update, and then mark that as a false positive which would then allow the grant, to pr the grant application to move forward in its review processes or the payments in this case to move forward in its payment processes and being paid out to the grantee. So as I mentioned earlier, um, there are uh, two different uh, service providers uh, with Smart Simple that are integrated into the platform for utilizing this service. Um, so you'll see uh, the settings for those under global settings within your instance. Um, and under integrations, just like with any built-in platform integration uh, within the system, um, you'll see down within the service settings, there will be a watch list settings link. The watch list settings link then provides you uh, the opportunity to enter in your account credentials, either for CSI Web or for LexisNexis. Um, just to speak to LexisNexis briefly, um, in that case, what you'll be providing within the system uh, is a much simpler uh, set of credentials. Uh, essentially your account credentials for being able to utilize their services for this type of service. Um, the, all the settings uh, that are defined for LexisNexis, such as the uh, particular watch list that you're including in each and every scan or those thresholds that I talked about, those are all managed within LexisNexis, uh, their portal uh, for interface for uh, their clients and accounts. Um, so you're not adjusting and setting those parameters within Smart Simple. You would be adjusting and setting those directly with LexisNexis. Conversely to that, with CSI, uh, they uh, have all of those uh, credentials and thresholds uh, built into the Smart Simple platform. Um, so you'd be providing your billing ID, your password for being able to utilize their services, uh, but then you can adjust the uh, scanning threshold and the particular watch list that you want to include as a part of each scan directly within Smart Simple. 
there's certainly a, a portal that CSI provides for you to be able to uh, interact with, see results, see additional data and metrics related to your accounts and your services. Um, but these particular settings uh, can be applied and changed directly within Smart Simple. So that by default, um, the scanning threshold um, is typically set to 0.85. Um, but if you feel that you're receiving too many false positives in that case, um, you could always change that to say, let's a 0.90, uh, and that might um, potentially reduce some of those false positives because you're increasing that threshold uh, that needs to be met uh, based on the details you're sending to the service provider and then what they uh, identify uh, from potential hits against those uh, many different watch lists. So that is the brief overview uh, of uh, automated watch list scanning. Um, like I mentioned, these are things that go well beyond just that typical OFAC check that maybe you might even have automated and set up on your org records today, because in the past within Smart Simple, um, we've had different solutions for these types of uh, systems and needs. Uh, but the automated watch list scanning uh, capabilities allow for you to really take out a lot of the individual manual attention to each and every uh, application review or payment review and really just build that into the process and then only have to address uh, those potential hit issues if and when they occur. So with that, I will open up the floor to any questions. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Um, so our first question, um, will you be sending us a video recording of this webinar? Uh, yes, we will be. Uh, we're hoping to send the recording out within the next week. So just keep your um, eyes out in your inbox and something will be coming shortly to you. Any other questions from anybody? It doesn't look like any right now. Um, but if people do have questions, please feel free to reach out to us after the webinar, um, you can contact us at business solutions at smartsimple.com. Um, be happy to yeah, hear from you, get, uh, learn some more. And on that note, if there are no more questions. We hope you have a great rest of your day. Okay. Thank you, everybody.